I knew what was coming. A few moments later, my phone rang. It was a general manager, the same person who called me the year before, telling me again that it was time to go. I got up off the operating table, took off my gown, and caught a ride back to the team's practice facility. I was less than an hour removed from surgery and still foggy from the pain meds, but upon arrival, I was asked to return my playbook and empty my locker immediately. I turned in my team-issued iPad and received in exchange a large black garbage bag. I awkwardly opened up my locker with my left hand, my right still heavily bandaged and punctured with pins, and item by item, I dumped the memorabilia from my locker into this large black hole. As the bag filled up, my emptiness increased. I spent the next few weeks rehabbing and the subsequent months training, waiting for a callback from an NFL team, any NFL team. I remember stealing some traffic cones from a parking lot in Philly and using them to do drills in an alley behind my apartment. I found empty fields to train on. My former teammates were making millions. I was making end meets with the severance check the team gave me when they sent me packing. It was embarrassing. Though I was not seeing a psychologist at the time, the word depressed crossed my mind on more than one occasion. It was dark, cold, lonely, and I had no end in sight. My friends in the NFL were busy playing, and my non-football friends didn't live in Philly. I was alone. I was sad. I didn't know where to go. It all felt like something I'd feared my whole life. Failure. From the injury to the release to the solo workouts, I saw the life I worked so hard to attain, the success I competed for with my whole body, mind, and soul just slipping away. And though it wouldn't be the last time I stepped on an NFL field as a football player, it was a major turning point in my life. During that time, I had a decision to make. I could either do the logical thing, sit, train, wait for a team to call me back, or I could do the illogical thing, pour all that energy into something completely new that I had no experience in. Eventually, I made up my mind to choose the latter and decided to pursue a career in media. Now, prior to this, I had put my head down, worked hard, forewent my individuality for the sake of the team. But now, despite all signs pointing away, I knew I needed to step out, use my voice, and share what was inside me with the larger world. This decision changed everything. Instead of chasing a dashed dream, I began to believe in my heart there was something more to me, something more for me, more to my story. I just needed to be brave enough not to follow old patterns and instead reach for new ones. I needed to be illogical. A little over two years later, I rejoined the Philadelphia Eagles to celebrate the Super Bowl. Except this time, it wasn't as an NFL player. I was a television analyst. Fast forward to July 2020, after the tragic murder of George Floyd, I got another call from the Eagles general manager. But now, he was asking for my advice. The team wanted to make a statement, but didn't know what to say. So they asked me for help because I had been using my voice and platform to speak out against racism, and I was now well-versed in the media landscape. They let me take control of their statement and make a few edits as I saw fit. I did. That same general manager, the one who allowed me to be cut five times before I turned 25, would call me again a few weeks later, asking me to come speak to the entire team about how to best stand for justice in the midst of our world's turmoil. My illogical path led me straight to my truest calling. Now, before we get any further, let's start with a working definition of what logic actually is. Logic for the purpose of this book, is conventional wisdom, the thoughts, beliefs, and opinions held by the majority of people around you. But let's break it down even further. That word conventional is derived from the word convention. So what is convention? Well, our friends at Merriam-Webster tell us it's a general agreement about basic principles or procedures. Wisdom is defined as the fact of being based on sensible thinking. Putting the pieces together, conventional wisdom is a general agreement about basic principles or procedures based on sensible thinking. Let's get historical for a second. For hundreds of years now, women have unfortunately been forced to chase the ever-evasive standards of beauty. As soon as society...